Hey, welcome back to SCR Filter. Today we're gonna to talk about super photos. And you guys have probably never heard the term super photos, but let me tell you what super photos means because most of your guys' photos suck. Um, and what I mean by that is, is they are not super. They're not incredible. And it is so important. It's like literally the number one thing is to have absolutely drop dead, gorgeous, stunning photos for your listing. So what happens is, is it all starts with the staging. Most of the properties that I see that are underperforming right now, that are not ranked on page number one, that are, are struggling to get bookings, are the ones that are poorly staged, poorly lit, and have, I don't know, shitty to good photos. Good photos are not good enough anymore. You taking your photos with this is not really gonna turn out very well. Um, you hiring a real estate photographer that does standard real estate photos that comes in and doesn't understand what the selling points are with your amenities that doesn't own short-term rentals, probably not going to turn out to be the best. I can't emphasize enough on this episode that having the best photos is going to help you win. If you want to win and you don't want to struggle, especially as we get ready to go into shoulder season, you need to have the best photos. So that's like the number one thing. And people ask me all the time when I do listing optimization reviews, I do them in the Facebook group all the time. Um, and I don't, half the time I don't even jump into the copy until the very, very end. I'm just going through everybody's photos. And it's not just the first five. Everything needs to be stunning. And it's never been more important than right now because literally saturation is up, demand is down. That means that we are competing and we're having to compete harder than we ever have. So what I'm going to really start with is I'm going to use the Smoky Mountains as an example because it's one of the most saturated markets. I mean, Broken Bow is saturated, Smokies, Gulf Shores, they're all, all the good markets are saturated. It's why I'm investing in place, places that people are not talking about. Please don't come to Whitefish, Montana. It's a shitty market. You guys don't want to be there. It's cold. It snows during the winter. Um, it's horrible. Don't ever invest there. I wish I would have never invested there. Just kidding. I love it. Um, and But that's a lifestyle asset, folks. It's more lifestyle asset than it is financially driven, uh, you know, investment. So that's why you shouldn't be following influencers in the markets. You have no idea why they're really investing. Uh, with that being said, I flew Chris, my COO, out to shoot my drone footage, shoot my videos, uh, do my, uh, my photos when I was hosting a small retreat at the Whitefish Lodge in May. Uh, photos turned out fantastic. The drone footage and the videos, not so much. And it's not Chris's fault. It's that all there was these huge fires up in Canada and all of the smoke came down and sat over Whitefish in the Flathead Valley. And so when he's got the drone out over the river looking at the Canadian Rockies and Stillwater Lake and flying into the house, it's smoky. It's not, it's not the best representation of the property. So I'm going to have to redo those. On the good, better, best model, they're better. They're not just good, but they're not good enough to just boom, just absolutely stand out and, you know, crush everybody else. And that's the mentality that I have, folks, is I want to crush every other listing around me. That's why we spent $1,800, $2,000 with my neighbor who restores mixers. So we bought a Hamilton Beach on eBay, one of those three-prong... Um, not three prong, but I guess three cup milkshake uh, machines. And we had him restored in this amazing electric blue. One, it creates a marketing opportunity for me. Two, it looks absolutely stunning in my listing. Three, nobody else has one. So when I can get great photos of that to market it, that is the marketability that I'm looking for. I can't just have a regular iPhone photo of that. It's not going to pop. It's not going to you know, it's not going to look like just this amazing, cool, you know, if you've ever seen like, you know, these black and white photos, and then you see, you know, the, the, the pink flamingo in this black and white photo, that's what we want. We want our photos to stand out in that type of reference, that type of feeling. It's got to strike emotion. So, you know, there's a kid named Andrew Keller that does short-term rental photos and man, he nails, absolutely nails, um, you know, the golden hour. And he even does some of the staging. The staging's critical. I can't tell you how many times I see your dining rooms and I see your dining table with four chairs, six chairs, eight chairs, it could be 12 or 16 chairs, but it's just a plain old fucking table. 
It doesn't have a runner. It doesn't have a centerpiece. It doesn't have flowers or a doble. It doesn't have chargers. It doesn't have napkins, like nice napkins. It doesn't have charcuterie. It doesn't have wine glasses. It doesn't have all that stuff. And it just doesn't look amazing. It looks okay for what it is. You might have spent three grand on your dining table and 250 a chair, but it doesn't look like it. It's the towel setups that you have and you have them hanging in your, in your bathroom when you should have them rolled up and stored beautifully underneath the sink or you know, waiting on the bed uh, you know, with a tray of chocolates and stuff like that to make me feel like I'm walking into a Four Seasons even if you're charging $200 a night. The bed, the bed configuration, it blows me away. And like using the Smokies, it's the same in every property. Go look at your competitors in the Smokies. It's that same, like, I don't even know what to call it. It's got the pat, the red and patterns and, you know, it's got the bears on it. And I see all this tchotchke, you know, bear mountain stuff, you know, take the bed and then you have two pillows, maybe four, if you're lucky on your bed, we put an average of nine pillows on every bed. It doesn't matter if it's the beach, if it's Banner Elk, if it's a lake property, if it's Montana, Arizona, Colorado, like nine pillows. So that's, King size, even if we even if we have smaller beds, which we have like, I don't think we have one queen bed. Actually, we do have a room in our new Montana property it has two queens in it. We still have two king size pillows. So the firm pillows go in the back. So even on a queen size bed, two firm pillows in the back, then two soft pillows in front. Then there's like two European pillows. Then there's two decorative pillows and a third decorative pillow. And we're talking like nine pillows. So that's two, four, six, eight, yep, nine pillows on like every single bed. Those are the things that are gonna make it stand out. Do something a level above every place else. And on those pillows, so they're white that you sleep on and there's four of those, right? Then there's like these big square European pillows. They're typically white as well. And then we have the accent colors, whatever that is, it's gonna be primary, secondary or tertiary color. So I'm talking a lot about design and staging, but that's what sets the tone for your photos right? And make sure that you're using primary, secondary, tertiary colors. So don't have, you know, red and greens on your bedspreads that you have and, uh, you know, the Smokies and then go in and have blue towels or black towels in the bathroom. Everything needs to be cohesive from the kitchen to the family room to the bedrooms, all of that stuff, primary, secondary, tertiary colors. I can't emphasize that enough. And one of them has to have this pop, you know, a little bit of pop of color. The other thing is like, you know, I see a lot of places down at the beach and the Panhandle and Miami and all these, you know, places that it's just white. It's like white and grays and it looks sterile. I feel like I'm walking into a hospital. We need some color. Don't go crazy. Don't go overboard. But that staging all sets the tone for how good or bad your photos are going to turn out. So that's when I'm talking about the marketability of a property. First thing is you're, you're looking at, you know, what wows at the property? What's going to stand out? How are your amenities? Kenny and I were recording some STRnomics podcasts this morning. And literally, I was talking about, he was talking, he just added a, a hot tub to uh, his property and that he thinks it'll do about $20,000 in additional revenue for a $13,000 hot tub. So he's going to get a payback on that in eight or nine months, uh, which is great. But a lot of that has to do with how we market it. So he showed a picture of a property I think it might have been in broken, no, it was a lake property. And one had a, just an average photo and there was a tree in the photo and there was a hot tub with a cover over it and there were stairs kind of blocking the view and a barbecue blocking the view. And then the other one, it kind of looked like, imagine a lady in a, a circular, you know, like four foot wide hot tub with, you know, a field or a farm and some hills and a setting sun. It was just beautiful. It was kind of like a Corona commercial, not on the beach. Right, and it was relaxing and it set the tone. That was a super photo. And to look at those side by side, you really can tell. So here's the challenge I'm gonna to give to you. Go above your price point. So if you're 80, if you're actually, let's just use bedrooms, that's easier. If you're a four bedroom, go to the five and six bedrooms and look at the highest price properties you know, in that price point. Find the multi-million dollar properties and look at how good their photos are. Not just from a color standpoint, a brightness standpoint, taking advantage of golden hour standpoint, but look at how the properties are staged. The staging is really what sets the tone for the photographer. The second part of this is, is you need to give your photographer 
explicit instructions. If they are not a seasoned short-term rental photographer that they are showing you the portfolio that they have already done and they're proud of it and you love what you see, you need to give them guidance. Because I believe we need three photos for every single room, right? There should be the big wide angle from like the door walking in, then it might be on the other side, you know, the other corner. So I look at corner to corner, opposite corners is typically what I like to shoot because then I'm going to get everything in the photo. And then what's the accent for like us and we just did our Montana house, getting these incredible lamps with the headboard, the pillows and the, the mural backdrop behind the master bed uh, that Bria just did was amazing. Bathrooms are really hard to shoot, making sure they have super wide angle lenses to be able to get everything, to get that single shot in the bathroom to where you can get the mirrors, the vanities, the toilet, the soaking tub, and you know the tiled shower, all of that stuff in one. Because most of these just standard real estate photographers are cutting the images off and you're not getting the feel of the entire room. And they think it's okay to get a third, a third, and a third. I, in our Host Academy weekly coaching calls a couple of weeks ago, I was looking through some listings and literally this poor lady had an amazing property in Colorado but a third to maybe a third to almost 40% of her photos, literally there's a rule of thirds when you're doing photography. I'm not an expert in this, Chris, my man is, but literally like a third of all of her photos were the ceiling inside. Just an absolute catastrophe, a waste. The photos were below average because I'm seeing ceiling in the majority of her photos. So giving guidance, staging, Making sure that you're staging differently when you're designing your decor, and most importantly, stay within your primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. Make sure your dining tables are staged. Make sure that your your bathroom uh, vanities and countertops are staged. Make sure that you know you've got your coffee bars in the right places, and just check the stuff. Make sure there's there's not a roll of paper towels, you know, in the backdrop. Make sure there's not a sponge. All these little things that we need to make sure that we have it staged because at the end of the day, we want our property to look like the last 90 seconds of an HETV show. That's simple. Thanks for joining me on this episode of STR Unfiltered. Look forward to seeing you guys on the next episode.